So that's super dope. Some guy just commented on that video that I shot and posted, and he goes, Kyle, we hashtag make, sh wait, where is it? Kyle, we hashtag make cool shit regularly. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends that won't be ya. Been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Hey, I want to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where I bring on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives to share their top is tips that for success lot? with you. My name is Adam Torres, and you can follow me on Insta, Ask Adam Torres, to keep up with my book releases, uh, also book tour schedule, all that good stuff. Love to connect with you there. I'm really excited to have Kyle Milan on the line today. He's the CEO of Five Fools Agency. They're doing remarkable things over there. They do a daily blog. I mean, they just have so much video content coming out. So everybody that's out there interested in video, um, these are your guys. Listen up, listen up closely because they have some things to teach us both. Um, but first, Kyle, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate being on. So I'm excited to get into a lot more of what you're doing over at Fivefold Agency. Um, but before we get into that, let's just take a couple steps back and let's just talk about how you got started as an entrepreneur. Yeah, so um, I did not grow up in an entrepreneurial family. My family was pretty much blue collar, working class. Um, but my dad always always put into me that I could do anything, achieve anything. Um, and so that kind of sparked some things inside of me. But then when I was around uh, senior year of high school, I just got bored with school. So I actually did not graduate high school. Um, started working instead because I wanted to start my career off, start making money. And, and figuring out exactly what I wanted to do. I always had the drive to, to do something great and do something big, um, just didn't have it figured out yet. So I started working at a young age, um, right out of high school, and then started going to school part-time, got my GED, started going to college part-time for what I was studying, which was engineering, and then eventually realized that you can't make that much money in engineering like you could in sales and marketing. So got into the sales and marketing world, um, all in manufacturing and, and industrial space. And even still, while I was working, I just always knew that I could, or had this drive to say that you know I could do it better if I was running things, if I was a decision maker. Um, I just wanted to have a bigger piece of the pie. Um, so after about a decade in that and got enough experience, um, I got out of working for somebody else and started the marketing agency basically doing for companies what I had just done for businesses I worked for for about a decade. So it was never anything that was... Got it. Yeah. And so we're going to definitely get a lot more into your agency, but let, let's kind of stick in the past for a minute longer. Um, yeah. So what, what do you think about, you know, there's just people listening, and they're, they're, they're kind of deciding whether to go out on their own, whether to make that jump. I, I find that theme that you just mentioned, I, I think that I could do it better myself. I think a lot of people have that, and that's really a big, a big thing that just is stuck in your head when you're working or doing something else, and you're like, ah, I could fix that, but I can't do it because I'm, in, I'm not running things. Right, right. right. Like, what would you? What kind of advice would you give them on, you know, on taking that jump? Yeah, so I would say that that while a lot of people say that, um, you got to kind of put it into context. Everybody thinks that when you're younger, right? That's that's somewhat of an immaturity thing. Um, you have to put the time into working before you really know anything to talk about, and then at that point, if you feel like you have the drive that you could do something better. Then, then there's beefier context behind it. But I think everybody between the ages of 18 and 25 think that they could do anything better than anybody else, especially their boss. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, that's a, that's a, I think that's a good band of, of age group to, to, to kind of generalize. Yep. And some of them can, right? Some of, these, some of these really young entrepreneurs that have done some amazing things have proved they could, but they're definitely the exception, not the norm of the 18 to 25 year old, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk more about your agency now. I'm excited to hear more about what you're doing and, and tell me more about this video. So as CEO of Fivefold Agency, so what, who are your clients, how you help them? Yeah, so, so after working so long in the manufacturing industrial space, um, there was kind of a need in the, in the digital marketing world to have a, a company that understood technical products and technical services and more of the engineering type things 
because there just wasn't really agencies that understood that world. So that's why I started it, mainly serving originally manufacturing industrial companies that uh, make anything out of plastic metals, corrugated chemicals, and handling all of their marketing or just a singular aspect. So we're essentially a full service digital marketing agency doing everything from web design, social, SEO, pay-per-click, uh, branded graphics, email marketing, everything under the sun, um, but only doing it in a couple niche verticals of tech companies, industrial manufacturing, and some, some specific consumer brands. So we handle everything, um, but it's, we, we're very selective on who we do business with. So what are some, um, I mean, what are some, and I, I know why, but I know some of the people listening out here, uh, they may be working with companies that, that say they can handle anything, handle anyone. What are the benefits of working with a company that works at, in their specific niche like yours? Yeah, so the main thing is, is that on a daily basis, we are, are primarily serving the same market, so we have a better strategy and data to support things at scale. So it's just like if any, if any company only does a service for a specific niche, they have more data, more experience, and can get faster to the market with less hiccups than somebody that says, I do this for everybody. So we can typically produce results faster in a short amount of time because we don't have to learn and do the discovery in these, in these niches and industries because we've already been doing it for years. And let's, so let's talk about the creative on the video side of things. Yep. Um, because to me, I always think the I always thought that that like that industry. So when you said that that's what you specialize in, I'm like, oh, so you're probably responsible for some of those videos I've seen on LinkedIn. Where I'm like, whoa, <laughs> a decade ago, you would never see a video of somebody process in manufacturing. Now you're like, whoa, that's super interesting. Let's yeah. talk about the creative. Yeah. So so the creative side of it, um, really, what it's what it's at in 2019 and it's going to continue to be is it's all about brand awareness and content. So whoever's gonna make the most content is gonna make the most noise, and whoever's getting creative with that content and showing the behind the scenes raw, you know, face to camera style content is what people are most interested in seeing. That's gonna get the highest engagement. So less about the corporate fluffy videos with boring elevator music in the background, and more about the fast paced action and showing people exactly what it is that you do. So that's what we focus on doing for our clients. And then on, on our side, we focus on showing people transparency at the agency and produce as much content as we can about how we help companies and just give it all away for free. Let's talk about frequency, because you said the most um, content. So, I mean, what is, and I know this will vary, but let's, let's try and establish um, some context for somebody that's out there that may be doing no content or is thinking about it. I mean, what, how many, like, how much content are we talking? A video a week, five a week? I mean, just throwing it out there. Let's, let's talk some numbers. Yeah, so it all depends on what the bandwidth of the person or the resources that they have. I mean, I'd say at a, at a minimum, um, if, it's a, if it's a company, I would be doing two blog posts a week, or sorry, a month. So doing two articles a month at a minimum is going to help SEO and have something to be able to share. But ideally looking at weekly content. Once a week producing some piece of content, whether it's an article, a short video, um, anything, anything that's gonna get attention, doing it on a weekly basis is going to get way better traction than somebody just doing it monthly. But at the end of the day, there's no, no such thing as bad content, so producing something is better than producing nothing. So if you can get to a... Oh, I, lo I love you say that. I love that you say that. And the, and the funniest thing about that is I, I talk to business owners all the time and I'm like with great stories and great things going on and they tell me and I'm like, oh, where can I learn? Like, can I see something? Can I see it? Like, you're just interested whether it's a machine, especially the industrial side. It's just so, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's good to look at. It's not, it, it is visual um, in, in short snippets, right? For the people that are working the job or going through it, maybe they don't think about it looking cool, but from an outsider looking in, um, to me, it's always like, it's always interesting. And I think you're always going to hit your market at some point. Like whoever, and not everybody out there finds this interesting. So I do, so I watch it. And that's what I tell people. I say, if you just create the content and if you're consistent with it and it, 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 it should get better ideally, but start somewhere, yeah. um, then you're going to attract some type of audience 
somebody out there is going to watch it and you'll build a true base over time. And, and as you get more, as you get better, as the content gets better, you test, you do other things, you hire an agency like Fivefold Agency to help you along that, along that path. Um, but start somewhere. So I love what you said, minimum two blog posts. So if you're out there and you're not putting out at least two blog posts a month, um, you're, you're behind. And this isn't, and the other thing is that you can't just catch up. So even if you do ha- get this, approve a big budget and X amount of years ahead, I mean, you're not going to catch up. You're going to have, you're going to be fighting when, and against the noise of somebody else who had years of content some of which may have been not as good years ago, but it's getting a little bit better. You can't, you're not going to just catch up in 10 years and say, okay, now we need to look at this. You need to look at it now. Ideally, you should have been looking at it five years ago at least. Right. But now there's no excuse. You need some type of content being produced. It's just such a, it's just such a low um, barrier of entry now, nowadays with the technology of getting something out there. Um, what, do you find is the, what do you find is the biggest mistake that... Um, that some of the people that you, when you just bring them in um, and you're, you're just getting into their strategy of what they've been doing, what do you find is the kind of like the big mistake that's being made? I, so I think that the big mistake that people made prior to working with us, because usually when we bring, when we bring clients on, mm-hmm. they, they pretty much throw up their hands and say, whatever direction you want to take it, yep. we trust you. The mistake they make prior to us is they're, they're typically focusing on perfection. So perfection will get you nowhere, and what you end up doing is just hamstringing and hamstringing yourself into thinking that everything has to be perfect when it's all about quantity, not quality. So while if, if quality is a benchmark or a baseline of just saying you can hear something, you can read something, it's a piece of content that is consumable, you do not have to focus on perfecting that. And people spend too much time spending time perfecting and second guessing themselves rather than just putting it out there and let the market decide, is this a good piece of content? Because content is subjective, right? I may make something I think is great, you may hate it. And if you're my target demographic, I care more about what you think than what I think. So by putting it out there at scale and trying to be, you know, outwork your competition and just putting it out there and seeing what the market says, that's, that's the hamstring that everybody you know, deals with and the perfectionism of everything and you just need to create it and throw it out there and you'll be shocked at how much people like it. Oh my gosh. You're, my, my team is, when they it, when they listen to this, they're going to be laughing. They're going to say, see Adam, I told you, people have been bugging me for years to create a podcast and I just didn't want to get into it. And then I finally one day just said, okay, I'll just do it and we'll see what happens and, and we'll do it. Okay, done. Um, yep. You're supposed to do it. It helps me to promote books. It helps me to do all the other things that I do. And, you know, I, I gathered an audience and people like it and the numbers just grow every single day. And I'm like, and I'm just blown back because I'm like, man, if I would have started this podcast five years ago when my team was bugging me to do it, um, then it would, it would be that much bigger now. But the point was is that I was exactly making the mistake you're saying, which is, thinking of being a perfectionist and thinking of all these other things and reasons why not to do it instead of just doing it. And then you get all these numbers and you're like, oh, shoot, I have not been doing this. Like, okay, you were right. <laughs> yeah. I should have did it a long time ago. Okay, it's okay. Well, whatever, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> yeah, it's, ne- it's never too late to start. It is never too late to start. So. I love it. Um, and speaking of starting, uh, so how can people uh, get a hold of you, get a hold of your agency if they're out there and, and working in your niche and there's like, oh, we need some help. How, how do they contact your company? So the best way to get a hold of me is going to be on LinkedIn or Instagram and just searching my name. Um, that is going to be the fastest. I've got, I've got a lot of activity on LinkedIn. We're posting up there daily, going to YouTube, putting my name into YouTube. We post content every single day. Um, and just give all of our marketing strategy and tactics away for free to try and help as many people as possible. I love it. Well, hey, Kyle, um, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody out there, go search uh, Kyle Milan. Go, go, um, they're putting out video every single day on YouTube. Make sure that you uh, follow or subscribe to that channel. And also, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author in one of my upcoming books, don't forget to head over to my website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to uh, apply. Um, so, Kyle, again, thank you for your time today. Appreciate you coming on the show. Have a great day. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it.
just got off a podcast with Adam Torres talking about content marketing and things that we're doing here. If you guys got value out of this content, hit that like button. If you got questions about anything we talked about, leave it in the comments below and we will see you on the next one. Just end things like that. We don't even like, I just paused audio and I just paused recording and that's, you know. <laughs>